All right, so here's the hangman exercise. Essentially what we want to do is we want to create a hangman game for everyone, depending on these words. So let's go ahead and copy this nice handy dandy array of words that we have here and bring it into AppJSX. Oh, let me delete all of this good old CSS. All right, all the CSS is gone. And let me get rid of everything in here as well. Uh, don't need any of this. And finally, we just need a words argument. I gotta take off my watch so I could actually type here, sorry. So let words be equal to, and there is our words. So now we have all of our words available. I can log them into the console if I really wanted to, but I know that I have my array of words. And let's just go ahead and do an H1 here. And do hangman. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and put an input type text that's going to have a max length of one character. And I'm just gonna close it there. And maybe I want to make this into a form so that the user can press enter or click on a button that will be input type submit. All right, so I think that's a good start. Let me go ahead and run npm run dev here. And let's open this up on the browser. All right, so there's my simple hangman. I have my, my words and I have my form here. Okay, great. Now, uh, we want to display to the user what the answer may be. So let's do an H2 tag and call display, display word. Now display word doesn't exist. So display word is going to be a constant variable. And this constant variable is going to be a use state. So I'm gonna say display word and then set display word. Uh, this use state here is going to be equal to, uh, and this is just going to be, oh, I should probably name this words. So this is going to be set to words at index of, and then I believe it's math.random uh, times the length, or I think it's words.length minus one. Let's do that number. Okay, let's refresh it and see what it does. Doesn't seem to be working very well. So let's see what's happening. It was plus one, Francisco. Say again? It was plus one. It's uh, exclusive of zero or inclusive of zero. Plus one. Exclusive of the end. Okay, let's do that. It's not returning. Me. And then, sorry, don't you also have to for it? So it's not a decimal? Uh, that makes sense. Let's try that. You're right. My math skills with JavaScript are not the best. I personally am not the biggest fan of good old JavaScript. I think someone sent a meme where it shows JavaScript as like a drunk language, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So you don't go there. You go there. There it is. All right. So now we can see the display word. All right, now we don't actually want to show the answer. So maybe we could set this as answer. And then we'll just copy this good old use state here. And instead of doing the math.random in both places, because that would actually give us two separate words, we could just utilize the initialized value of answer for now. All right, <clears throat> so there you go. Everything's kind of connected. I have my answer and I have my display word. Now I want to create a function that's going to show spaces instead of the actual letters here. So I'm just gonna make a function here. I'm gonna name it encode. I don't necessarily need it to take in any parameters as of now. 
all I needed to do is let's say let uh, word be equal to uh, answer dot map. Oh, hello. Oh, it's not going to let me because I need to turn it into a list. So I think I can do that here. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to map through it. And I am going for every letter. I am going to return a underscore. You have to do quotes inside your split parentheses. All right. Otherwise, it's just going to be a full word. Thank you. All right, so let's console.log that word real quick. And let's return word.join, where it's going to join everything with a space. All right, and then we're going to encode here. We're going to say, hey, I want the original value of encode to be the word. Okay, so we're getting an error here. We're saying, hey, this uh, consider adding an error boundary. The above error occurred. All right, you're not giving me much of an error to work with. All righty then. Why are you throwing an error? It is returning something, and this should work. Let's just go ahead and make sure that it does work. All right, so the error is being triggered before encode is being actually called. And it's likely because of this functionality that we have here. So I may have to utilize a use effect. I'm going to say, hey, uh, use effect, I want you to uh, set display word to the return value of encode every time the value of answer changes. And instead of doing this, I'm just gonna do no. All right, there you go. All right, so we get the original answer. After the original answer is created, that changes the value of answer. So the state triggers the use effect. The use effect then triggers the set display word to the return value of encode. And that's how we get all of these spaces, uh, there's our console.logs, which I have twice for some unnecessary reason. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, good. And then we return the join statement for all of these. All right, so there you go. We have our encoded value, we have our form, and now we need the ability to make a guess. And every time we make a guess, if it's correct, it needs to show up here. We'll handle incorrect letters later on. So. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's do a const. And in this case, I have a user guess. We're gonna do set user guess. This is gonna be equal to an empty. And it's equal to empty because I'm going to actually utilize it in my input field. So I'm going to say that the current value is the user guess. And on change, this is going to trigger an event. And I want to set user guess to event.target.value. All right. So that's going to capture my user guess. Uh, if I type in E, user guess will be equal to E. If I type in J, and so on. All right. Now we need to actually create a function for when this form is submitted. All right. So let's do const make a guess. And inside of this function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take in the event because this is going to take in my forms event. I am then going to prevent the default behavior of my form. And then I'm going to actually run some comparison here. All right. Uh, da, da, da. So let's do a different function of compare guess. 
And what this compare guess is going to do is it's going to grab the current guess and check where it is within the word. Once it checks where it is within the word, we're going to set user guess to the correct value there. All right, awesome. So let's do uh, let word be equal to answer dot split. Again, we're going to split the answer. We are then going to map through it, go through each letter, and then say if letter is equal to the user guess, all right, so if it is equal to it, then I want to return the letter. Otherwise, I want to return an empty space, kind of like my encoder. All right, and then finally, I'll set my display word to word.join, and let's put that space in there again. All right, so let's put that into action. Let's uh, call the make a guess. And, oh, that's not it. It's compare guess. Sorry about that. Compare guess. And we also want to set the user guess back to an empty string. All right. Let's also console dot log our answer here, just so we could see it. All right, so our answer is minionette. So if I were to type in, let's say the letter I and submit it, okay, that event prevent default didn't get triggered and that's because I didn't add my on submit method. That was a mistake I made here. There you go, so we're passing it again. Let's refresh it. Now we got Bartonia. Let's pass an A and submit. And there you go. We got A's showing up. Fantastic. Uh, let's do R's. Oh, well, there, there's a problem there, right? We are overriding what has been set before. So maybe we need to keep track of previous guesses as well. So let's do const. correct guess, and then set correct guess. This is just one way of doing it. I'm sure there's plenty of other ways that we can do this uh, functionality here, uh, but I'm actually going to open up this statement now. And instead of returning stuff, I'm just going to actually create a function. So in this function, I'm going to ask, hey, if the letter is in, oh, I think I could do that in JavaScript. Nope, let's do correct guess about contains includes, that's what I'm looking for, includes letter or if letter is equal to and I probably want to account for uppercase letters. So is equal to guess or user guess to lowercase. Then I want to return a letter. And if it's not, I want to return an empty space. And just to make sure that that letter gets added, uh, I'm just gonna do correct guess, or excuse me, set correct guess. And I'm gonna utilize the spread operator here to open user guesses or correct guesses, sorry. And then comma user guess. 
All right, there's a lot of JavaScript functionality that we're that we are doing here. So we can see how this could be a little bit of intense. All right, so let's try it out. We try the Z, Z populates. Let's try Y. Okay, Y is populating, G is populating, and A has now populated. So it's working. We're able to actually get all of the correct letters to show up. Uh, but now we need to find a way to account for incorrect letters. So this else statement needs to grow a little bit, all right? Uh, we probably can't do something like animating an entire hangman uh, in the amount of time that we have left. But what we can do is we could have a counter for a number of lives, right? And demonstrate that to the user. Oh, and we already have a count right up here, right? So let's do, let's say that a user has five lives. Um, and down here, we can also show it in an H2 tag saying, hey, number of lives left and show count there. Okay, so this else statement saying like, hey, if you guess wrong, this else statement is then going to count that. It's going to say, all right, well, uh, set count to count minus one. All right, so currently our correct word is polymorph. So if I pass in Z and I submit, it goes down to four. All right, awesome. If I put in R, shows up R, but it still counted it. Interesting. Why did you still count it if it was in the else statement? Hmm. There's probably still letter. It's probably accounting for all the other letters that you haven't guessed. So it's still putting else as the under underscore correct. Yeah, so I think that makes sense. I think I get what you're saying. But it's still triggering the else statement for all the letters that haven't been guessed. So therefore you count. Uh, I, I might be wrong there. Yeah, no, you are definitely correct. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's just have a separate function that will take care of that. Let's say set count. I'm just going to do it here in a simple um, answer dot split dot includes. And I want to check if the letter is included. If it is included, I am going to set the count to its already initialized value. And if it's not included, then I'm going to set count uh, to count minus one. And that is on the outside, so this should work. Let's try that out. All right, we do H. Uh, looks like it didn't like that. Oh, I did click submit. Why is this? What's going on here? Let's try that one more time. A, we click submit. All right, there's some errors. What don't you like? On caught reference, letter is not defined. And that is here because I am calling letter and letter doesn't exist. It should be user guess. Okay, let's try it again. We do H. H is showing up. Let's try Z because I don't think there is a Z in there. Oh, my number of lives left are no longer visible. Were they visible to begin with? Yeah, they were. Okay, so Z, submit. Otherwise set count to count minus one. Doesn't like this, so maybe minus minus. Assignment to constant variable. Okay, so I can't do count minus minus, but I also can't do count minus one for some reason. And the worst part is that it's not telling me why I can't do it because JavaScript uh let's see what can we do here
Okay, so that did raise an error. Good. Huh. I'm wondering why this isn't liking the whole count minus one variable here. That automatically gets rid of my function. And I'm wondering why. Let's see. Is the count variable still an integer? It is, uh, yes. Um. Hmm. All right, we'll have to decide for that later on. Uh, but for now, let's keep track of the incorrect guesses as well. So I guess this whole thing could be a different uh, function here where we want to ensure if something is not in the function. So const. Uh, evaluate wrong and in evaluate wrong we're going to need a different array of incorrect or let's just say wrong guesses let's set wrong guesses and make that equal to a use state which is an array and all this is going to do is it's going to say if answer dot split dot contains includes, excuse me, the user guess. We're just going to simply say if it doesn't contain it, then what I want you to do is I want to set wrong guesses to the spread operator of wrong guess on a user guess. All right, and then we could demonstrate that down here. Uh, let's put another H3 tag. And actually, instead of an H3 tag, we could just make this a li and say, wrong guesses dot map letter and what I want this to return I don't know why I put a lie in here what I meant to put was ul all right and what I want this to return is an li showing the letter okay now let's try that out Oh, I haven't even called my function, have I? Yeah, so there's my evaluate wrong. Let's call that here. Let's say evaluate wrong. That also needs to get called before my guess gets reset. So let's try Z. And there you go. Z is showing up. Let's try I. I is also showing up. G. K. G works. A. E. T. Okay, what about if I guess T again? That should probably not be added multiple times. Uh, so maybe I should have an if statement where it checks it as well. So let's say, and wrong guesses dot includes user guess. There you go. So now if I type in T again, it's not gonna get added. All right, and now to fix this counter problem. How much time do I have? I have two minutes, let's see. Good old Google, let's see. Uh, counter, integer, 
utilizing React click use state count minus minus. Let's see what comes up there. Oh, look at that. Google's AI function. Well, that's what I try to do, Google. No, they don't like that. They don't like that at all. But maybe I'm maybe I did it wrong the first time. Let's try it. Let's set count to count minus one. Okay, my count is showing. Let's submit that T. Okay, well now it's working. That's weird. I'm not sure why it wasn't working before, but now it is. <laughs> well, that's good. And we could continue going until this arrives at a zero. And once it arrives at a zero, well, now we just need to ensure that we do a separate function called end game. So const end game. And in here, we're just gonna say if count is equal to zero, then I want to alert uh, you died. There you go. Make it strong so that they understand it didn't work. And I also want to check if display word, which correct me if I'm wrong, but display word is a word that is being, okay, let's do this. A display word dot split because it is a string. I want to split by the spaces and then I want to join them without spaces and say if that is equal to answer, then I want to alert you want, or let's just say you survived. All right. Wow, that was a lot of code. And inside of this use effect, we're already checking answer. Let's make a separate use effect. This use effect will trigger the, what do I call it? Did I call it evaluate win or end game? There you go. We'll shoot end game and it will do this every time display word is evaluated and count changes. Uh, what are you crying about? The above error, consider adding an error boundary. Thank you, that that was helpful. Uh, app JSX line 173, cool. I don't have that line. Okay, so I've made a mistake somewhere in here. So I have my use effect that is running end game. Uh, and end game is saying if count is equal to zero, it's going to alert something. If display word, oh, here we go. So it's this display word because currently display word is set to null. So there's no such thing as dot split. So I have to do something like if display word and there you go. All right, great. So now it checks if there is a display word because it's originally set to null. And let's just actually play the game. Uh, so D was correct, but it still seemed to have subtract. So I broke something in my evaluate wrong. I apologize everyone. I don't think I have enough time to debug. Uh, Let's see if answer dot split dot includes user guess. And I am calling evaluate wrong before the user guess is being reset. Let's just take this functionality out and call it down here. All right, so let's do P. Okay, it's not working. All right, so it looks like I died. Uh, unfortunately, it was able to, uh, this set counter function. Oh, well, that makes sense. 
So if answer dot split in includes, there you go. That will do it. Okay, okay, and okay, okay, okay. Stuck in the infinite loop. Let's try it one more time. All right, so there we go. Let's get a couple wrong here. All right, there is one, I believe it was narrowish. B, okay. There you go, you survived. Fantastic. And there's my uh, makeshift hangman game. There was a lot of use state, a lot of functions that we utilize, uh, a lot of object deconstruction, quite a bit of manipulation here. I'm sure there's a lot of questions. It is past class time. Um, so if you, everyone is free to go, but I'm going to stick around in case anybody has questions and would like some answer question, some questions answered. So um, again, everyone is free to go. It's after class hours. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, but now please, you know, open up the floor for questions. What, what do we have? Can you zoom out on your, or just close the, the server for a second and zoom out on your code? Yes, sir. Oh, hello. I'm just trying to see where all of your. You are going to upload this code into notes and demos, right? Yes, that's correct. So, yeah. I mean, I'm just not that you can't look at it now. That is a that is something to spend time with. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of code. I apologize, everyone. I didn't realize how much code I was writing until I was done. It's uh, it needs to get isolated a little bit. Um, but if I were to kind of explain what's going on here, so first is our counter, which is just a simple count of five. Then we have display word. Uh, when things are initialized, the first thing we do is determine which one of our words is an answer. Once we have an answer, we utilize a use effect down here to set that display word that is happening with encode. And what encode does is it iterates through the word that we chose and it splits it and returns just underscores for each one of those letters. That then gets set to display word, which is initialized as null, but after that use effect is triggered, it gives it a value. Now, why did I have to set this to null first and then utilize that later on? It's because we're running a mathematical operation for answer. So if I try to call answer down here and try to encode it, answer may not have been chosen yet, right? So it's one of those things that I have to ensure happens in a specific chronological order. So that's why I have a use effect triggering this encode function. Let's hear it, Owen. So to my understanding, as soon as you open this, it's going to run through all those use states first. And that first initial use state that you have like in the, the parentheses after you state, that's what it's going to set it as. And then once you start adding buttons and stuff to call those use states, that's when things change. Like, I, I my my question is, it's going to run through all of these use states first as soon as you open that program, correct? That's right. It runs from top to bottom. So it's going to run through all of these use states first, initialize all of them with their initial values. And then once I have some use effect or buttons or forms or on submit methods, once those are triggered, then the updates will happen. Okay. That clears a lot of things up for me. Thank you. Of course. All right. So then we have all of our underscores showing up. We then created a make a guess function. And this make a guess function just triggers the compare guess. Uh, which honestly we should have just named it evaluate to true and then put evaluate wrong inside of this compare guess function. Uh, but in this compare guess, we are iterating through the answer, checking if the answer is actually, or if the letter is within the answer or in the correct guesses. If it is, then we add the letter to the correct guesses and we return the letter for the string. This way, when we set the display word, that letter is being consistently shown inside of our uh, display word. Now, once that is over, it goes into evaluate wrong. So in the case where our else statement was triggered and it's showing an underscore, what well, goes into evaluate wrong. And what evaluate wrong does is it checks 
if the answer contains this letter. If it does not contain it, it will also check if all of the previous wrong guesses already has this letter. If it doesn't have this letter as well, it will add it to the previous wrong guesses, decrease our lives by one, and then set the user guess back to an empty string. That way it's the form is getting reset back to empty. And then finally, we have our, uh, where did we call end game? Oh, finally, we have a use effect here that is checking on the display word every time it's being checked and it's checking on count. Now, what end game does is it checks if the count reaches zero. If it does reach zero, it's going to tell us, hey, you died. And if there is a display word, because remember the initial value is null, so I have to make sure that it has a value. So if it is not null and it is an actual string, I'm going to split that string, make it into an array of letters. I'm going to join it, make it into a single word with no spaces and compare that to answer. If they are equal to each other, then it's going to tell me that I survived. And I need to have a dependency both on count and display word. So that's why if we scroll down here into this use effect, we have them both in the dependency array. All right. Any other questions? I wish I would have more time to actually explain it and go through the whole process. So I apologize to everyone. It was only 30 minutes, so I tried to squeeze it. This was still super helpful. I agree. Demi, you got a question? I see it like at the tip of your tongue. You just don't sound happy. You did all this work, man. You you, you don't even sound excited. Like you what you go you went through all of this and you, you still sounded sad at the end. But I mean, we, we didn't get nowhere near this. You know, I just I just thought I'd let you know. And the second thing is in the assignment, it said something about doing it with components. Uh did you just do that to save time so you didn't move them all around? Yeah, so I just did it to save time and ensure that all the code was inside of one file, which kind of backfired because now we're at 116 lines of code. Um, but definitely it would be good to break this up and have separate components. Uh, for example, this form would be its component would be its own component, and this UL would also be its own component. And gotcha. probably a word as well. Yeah, that way it just don't look as bloated and intimidating, I guess. Nice. Okay. Well, appreciate you, Francisco. Of course. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Let me go ahead and stop the recording here.